Hi guys, hello and welcome. I'm Daniel Plant, this is Be More Bear, and the Suzuki is fixed. Kind of. Nearly fixed. Bit bodged, but it runs. It goes in and out of gear at idle and stays at idle for hours. So let me show you what I have done to get this far and make this motor usable. This motor now will run forever at idle. And look, even better, it goes into gear and it goes out of gear. It is idling now at about between 650 and 700 revolutions per minute. So I hear you say, how did you do it? Well, it wasn't easy and it's not technically fixed. Sadly, having spent all the time to disassemble a carburetor, clean it, and I have done everything to it, the motor still didn't work. So let's get down to exactly what we did, what you need to do, and how I have overcome the problem. Ultimately, what I've managed to do is make a motor that I felt was dangerous, usable and workable and it's a workaround but it's better than starting it in gear this just here is the carburetor this is your throttle linkage this here is your choke linkage and this is the air box and basically there are two bolts one of them is here and the other is just underneath the air box cover here they both need a socket to remove and remove the fuel hose here as well. Just gives you a bit of a, a closer look at what we're looking at. But again, throttle linkage needs to be disconnected. Choke linkage needs to be disconnected. And just here is the fuel hose. You can see one of the bolts just here. The other is just hidden, but it's very easily accessible. So let's take it off. And now that the throttle linkage and the choke linkage has been removed, it's just time for the two bolts. These require an 8mm socket. So now we have the carburetor off. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take this bolt off and remove the bolt from the carburetor. So now here you've exposed the float and this isn't stuck so that's a good sign. Next we're going to remove the screw from in here. So once you've removed the bowl just check that the float is free moving and this is. So now in here we have a screw and this is what we're going to take out to expose the jet. And just by tapping it, you expose the jet. I'm going to try and show you what we're looking at. I hope you can see it. If you open up the throttle body, on the inside, just in here, there are tiny, tiny pinholes. And these are what we want to unblock. So I'm going to do this with some carb cleaner and an old toothbrush. So now with a combination of a pick here, I've cleaned out the four holes. To be honest, you want to be very careful, but a bit of a screwdriver, a bit of a toothbrush, some carb cleaner, you're just trying to open up. This is what causes the rough idle. So now I'm just going to put 
everything back together. I've blown out just by putting my finger over the top of this and blowing. I've blown out the jet and I'm going to just reassemble it all now. motor now and I will see you as we try and start it up and see whether it works. So what you've seen is a disassemble the bottom of the bowl, we've taken the fast running jet out, we've cleaned it out, um, the bowl was clear, the float was went up and down, everything was fine with that. That's only half the story. What you have to now do is take off this top plate. I haven't showed this but it's four screws here. In fact, let's do that together now. Ultimately, what I'm trying to do is show you just how easy it is to disassemble these motors and problem solve. In order to get the plate off, you have to take the four screws at the top off. You also have to take this screw out here. This is the idle adjustment switch. In my honest opinion, I don't think you should ever have to touch this, but what do I know? In all fairness, this is so much easier when the carburetor is off the motor. But because I've already put it back on to test whether it all works, I'm just taking the top plate off for your benefit. The top plate just comes off like this. Now for the rubber gasket. And so what you have here is a screw this screw you remove and underneath that is the fuel jet. This one here and this one here are the air jets. Take all of them out with a small precision screwdriver, blast some carb cleaner through them, you're good to go. To recap, the jet in the bottom of the bowl is for the fast running. That is a big jet lets lots of fuel through. In the top here, these are your idle jets. They come all the way through the carburetor and they come out at those four holes just in front of the, well, two in front and two on the throttle plate inside of the carburetor. That is your idle. All those holes, all those jets need to be clear. That should, in the majority of cases, make your motor run perfectly. This one didn't, but that's another story. So now that we know that it's merrily running around at tick over behind me, what was it I actually did and what happened when I cleaned it? That carburetor is as clean as you can ever want a carburetor. What I actually think has happened in the past is this has taken a tumble. I suspect the broken handle broke on impact and I wonder whether a jet, an internal something or other somewhere has knocked a setting out on the carburetor. It's the only thing I can suggest. It is running now because I am running it with the choke out. That's right. This motor, unlike anything I have ever known, runs when the choke is out. And it runs well. Yes, it's not ideal. Yes, all you have to do is give a little bit of throttle, depress the choke, and away you go. But this will stay running in gear with the choke out. Now, why is this not ideal? Well, primarily because you're running it very, very rich. And by running it rich, you risk fouling your spark plugs. And that is a very real 
danger. When the spark plug is fouled, it won't fire, and therefore more spark plug changes. But at £3.86, I'm not gonna worry. The other thing is, it's slightly smellier. It probably doesn't. It definitely doesn't adhere to emissions controls now. But it does run. This is a win. Anyway, I just want to say thank you for watching. This isn't the way I saw the video going, but it just goes to show when you actually look at everything as a big picture, you have to consider what it is you're trying to achieve. Yes, I wanted the motor to run as new and be like new. That wasn't going to happen. So the next best thing is make it usable, make it run safely. And that is what we've achieved with this. No, it's not ideal, but again, thank you for watching. Please subscribe. We're going to get out in the big boat soon. Um, I've found a new launching place for that. And we're going to test this two and a half horsepower out on the river and make sure everything works as it should. But again, thank you for watching. See you in the next video.